So now we've got to talk about an important skill, and that's curved arrow pushing that you'll see in organic chemistry mechanisms. And we saw this a little bit in the acid base chapter, but we're going to see it a lot more from here on out. Uh, in this case, arrows show the movement of electrons. It does not necessarily show the movement of atoms, but it shows the movement of electrons, where electrons are either being used and forming a bond, or where a bond is breaking. And so your arrows should always originate from electrons, no ifs, ands, or buts. And it's not the most intuitive thing initially, uh, but something you gotta get used to. Uh, and in this case, if we look at this first one here, uh, we see that we're creating a new bond here between carbon and bromine. The question is where does that bond come from? Well, bromine ends up with three lone pairs. He starts out with four, and this lone pair must have done something. Uh, in this case, it's that lone pair that we use to create the bond. So we'll draw an arrow from the lone pair to the carbon atom that we make a bond to. So, and that's the only arrow we draw. That one arrow shows the creation of this new bond in the product. So, and in this case, again, the arrow starts from electrons and ends terminates here at the carbon atom. Now some people like to draw it towards the plus charge itself, but that's just a, a, a keeper here to let us know that carbon's not got a filled octet and stuff. Uh, but in this case, we want to draw the arrow all the way towards the carbon atom itself. In this case, we might define these here. Uh, we're making a new bond and bromine is supplying those electrons. That makes bromine the electron pair donor, the nucleophile. And the carbon he's bonding to, who's just saying, thank you very much, I accept your offer is the electrophile. And so overall, we call this nucleophilic attack, probably the most common type of mechanistic step you'll see throughout the semester. Uh, if we look at the second example down here, uh, we can see that we need to break this bond, and that's essentially all we're going to do. It's often called loss of a leaving group, and you'll find out in a couple chapters that bromine is a good leaving group. And in this case, we see that where do these two electrons go if that bond is breaking? And we see that bromine's gonna end up with a fourth lone pair. He's got three to start, he's gonna end up with four. And so he's getting both of those electrons. And so the arrow starts from the bond, which is again, a bond is made of electrons, and terminates at the bromine. So when a bond breaks this way, where one side, in this case, bromine gets both electrons, and the other side, carbon, in this case, gets nothing, we call this heterolytic cleavage. And we'll contrast that with the homolytic cleavage we saw at the beginning of, the semester, or beginning of this chapter. So the homolytic cleavage, both sides would get one electrons and both would be radicals. This is heterolytic cleavage, which is much, much, much more common. The arrow pushing in this one can be a, just a little bit tricky. Uh, we omit hydrogens in most bond line structures. And so uh, keeping track of the hydrogens, it turns out is pivotal in this one. So I've drawn it down below here so we can see all the hydrogens in the the key to this reaction is realizing that this carbon right here is two hydrogens in the reactant, but three hydrogens in the product. And so this hydrogen right here is the one it's picking up. Uh, we can see that the pi bond is broken. So that pi bonds, those electrons got to move somewhere. And in this case, they're the ones that are actually used to form the bond to the hydrogen. Now, typically when you form a bond to a hydrogen, it's customary to draw the arrow going right next to the hydrogen, not right at it, unlike other atoms. Uh, we should also realize that hydrogen and bromine don't end up bonded to each other anymore either. And hydrogen can only have one bond. So if this arrow signifies we're making a new bond between the carbon and the hydrogen, the old one needs to break. And we can see that bromine ends up with four lone pairs, not just the three it starts off with. That's where it's getting that fourth lone pair. Uh, the bond breaks and bromine gets both those electrons. So this is another form of nucleophilic attack and nucleophile always attacks electrophile. So this guy is our a nucleophile. This molecule is acting as our electrophile, and nucleophile, again, always attacks electrophile, i.e. nucleophile always attaches to electrophile, specifically the hydrogen atom in this case. Now, the next curved arrow pushing reaction here, a uh, proton transfer or a bronsted acid base reaction, is one you've already seen here. And in this case, this oxygen over here is going to gain a hydrogen proton transfer. And so the arrow always goes from the base to the acid, and again, we'll draw the arrow next to the hydrogen. Hydrogen can only have one bond, and this one is broken in the product, so we'll, in this case, it turns out that's where oxygen gets his third lone pair here. So, and that's ultimately the arrow pushing, and again, we saw this in chapter three. Uh, now, the next one here, we call carbocation rearrangement, and we'll deal with this in this first semester here, a little bit later, uh, not quite in this chapter, but we'll introduce ourselves to it here. So, and a carbocation is a carbon with only three bonds and an empty p orbital. So, and in this case, this carbon is ranked based on how many other carbons it's bonded to. We saw these a little bit earlier, and this is a secondary carbocation. And it turns out when you've got a carbocation, it might rearrange, but typically only to an adjacent carbon. 
So and in this case, I've got two adjacent carbons being a secondary carbocation, and those are the only ones I'll consider. And the general rule here is that if either carbon would be a more stable carbocation, then a favorable rearrangement will take place. And so we see this one over here is primary, whereas this one over here is tertiary. And so there is one that's more substituted. And earlier we learned that the more substituted carbocation is more stable. So there is going to be a favorable rearrangement. And the idea is that this hydrogen atom right here is going to pluck itself off and reattach so to our carbocation carbon. And the arrow for that shows the movement of the electrons. This bond is breaking and then reforming, bonding to that carbon. So, and that's why our carbon over here now doesn't have just the one H we started with, but now has two H's. So, but the carbon that just gave away the H is now the one that's missing a bond. And in this case, missing a bond, three bonds and an empty P orbital, he is now our carbocation. So that's carbocation rearrangement. The idea is that if you have an adjacent atom that would be more stable being the one missing the bond, being the carbocation, then he'll send something over your direction. Uh, we'll definitely study these in a little more detail soon, but not all carbocations rearrange, only if an adjacent carbon would be a more stable carbocation. So finally, I want to show an example of curved arrow pushing involving radicals. We'll have much fewer mechanisms in organic chemistry involving radicals, but I do want to at least introduce the idea here. Uh, and if we look here, we've got bromine here with a radical and this carbon right here with a radical and in the product they end up bonded to each other with that new newly created bond so we've got to explain how that newly created bond forms and it turns out they both contribute their electrons to form it and the way we kind of draw this when you show the motion of just one electron at a time you draw an arrow with only half of an arrowhead so and then we'll move this electron to make the other half of the bond so with the other half of the arrowhead. Now, this dashed line is not necessary. Some professors actually prefer that you draw it, but it's not necessary, but it just shows that we're creating this new bond between the carbon and the bromine, and these arrows show, these half-headed arrows show the movement of one electron each to form that new bond. So the dashed line technically again is not essential, uh, but some professors, maybe yours, would prefer you draw it uh, really up to them. Uh, but this is the curved arrow pushing for radicals, something you should be a little bit familiar with, uh, but again, much less common than the other we've seen.